Welcome to the Van Life Roadmap, Barefoot Theory's free online course all about van life. Join me as I share everything I've learned over four years of living on the road so you can take off in a van you love and never look back. In this lesson, we're going to cover pets and van life. If you follow me on Instagram, you know our dog, Charlie. He's a Border Collie mini Australian Shepherd mix who is crazy smart, a little bit neurotic, and has an unbelievable amount of energy. I truly believe van life dogs have the best life. They spend a majority of their time running outside, meeting tons of other dogs, and getting the occasional scrap of food that falls from your camp stove. That said, there are definitely some considerations to make to ensure your dog is as happy as you are. I also know people who travel with a cat, so if you're a cat person, know that you can bring your cat along for the ride too. With Charlie in the van, we much prefer camping at free dispersed sites. There are no leash laws, which allows us to relax while Charlie roams around and plays fetch. And in paid campsites, which often have camp hosts enforcing the rules, dogs are usually supposed to be on a leash. This is not as enjoyable for us or our dog, so we only stay at paid campgrounds when we have a reason to. For paid campgrounds, it is nice to have a longer or a retractable leash that allows them to walk around a bit around camp, and then they have a little bit of freedom without breaking the rules. Most pet owners are concerned about leaving their animal in the van. They want to know, is it okay to leave your animal in the van when you go out to eat? Or what about when you visit a national park where they might not be allowed on the trail? Of course, as pet owners, we prioritize places where our animal is welcome, but in some cases, this isn't always possible. Whether or not it's okay to leave them in the van in the first place is dependent on temperature and safety, and also on local laws that may prohibit you from leaving your animal in your car. As for temperature, if it's too hot for you in the van to be comfortable, it is also too hot for your pet. And it might take a little bit of time to actually figure out how hot your van gets after sitting in the sun for a while. In this van, we have two roof vents, one near the galley and one right above the bed. I find that if we crank those on high and maybe slide our bed windows open, we can get a really nice cross breeze in here. If it's in the evening after the sun has go gone down and we want to go out to dinner, we absolutely feel comfortable leaving Charlie in the van. We usually crack a window and make sure our insulating curtains are up leave in water, and call it good. In the heat of the day, however, this might be a different story. So you might need to find a restaurant with a dog-friendly patio instead. Or better yet, go to a picnic in the park. You need to use your common sense or you could be putting your animal at risk. I think you'll find that after a while, you'll learn to plan your travels around your ability to do stuff with your pet. Maybe this means avoiding really hot places in peak summer or choosing to bypass a national park and hiking on other types of public lands instead. With that said, if there's somewhere that isn't pet friendly that you really don't want to pass up, don't just leave your dog in your car for the whole day. If it gets hot enough, at best, you could end up with some angry dog loving bystanders and at worst, it could be very dangerous for your animal. No matter where you are, doggy daycare is almost always an option or there's also Rover where you might be able to find a dog sitter for a day or two. Having an animal, and I'm going to talk mostly about dogs here, also requires a few other considerations. You want to keep their vaccination records on hand for doggy daycare or in case you ever need to go to a vet. You also want to have them on a dog food that is widely available. Petco and PetSmart actually carry some really high quality pet food brands now and these two stores are everywhere making it easy to restock on the go. Other gear you'll likely want is a long and short leash, a nightlight for when they're roaming around, and a collapsible food and water bowl and also dog poop bags. As for keeping your van clean with a dog, you'll want to avoid white bedding and light colored upholstery. Dogs are messy little creatures, and to be honest, it's kind of a losing battle, but that's okay, they're worth it. But brushing your dog regularly, rinsing them off when needed, and having extra towels on hand to clean them up will help. A broom, a compressor to blow out the van, or a handheld vacuum is also very useful. 